Yo, Diablo 4 has performance issues and nobody is talking about it. To be more specific, we are likely talking about space allocation issues. Or more simply said, the game is incapable of freeing up VRAM and RAM to ensure a smooth game experience. Originally I have hoped that Digital Foundry would talk about it, but they kind of skipped that point. What happens is essentially that a game fills up the VRAM memory on the graphics card and then starts throwing the files that it can no longer put on the VRAM onto your system RAM and slowly fills that up too. But now let's get to the important point that is also part of the Digital Foundry video. Let's take a look. And this is where things take a familiar turn, as maintaining a smooth experience largely comes down to the texture quality you choose and VRAM. Wait, what's this? Here in the menu, it claims that smoothness depends on your system memory and not VRAM? So that's it, that's the important point. So what left the reviewer here a bit confused is texture quality usually only has something to do with the VRAM, that's the fast video memory on your graphics card that is responsible for keeping all the visual files that the GPU might want to use at some point. So normally textures have nothing to do with um, the normal system RAM. In the case of Diablo 4, however, it says here that higher texture quality and smooth gameplay requires higher VRAM, but also higher RAM, aka system memory, which is normally used for CPU tasks. And it's also specifically repeated again down here in this little text. For the ultra settings, 32 gigabytes of system memory is recommended, for a smooth gaming experience. So how did Digital Foundry test the whole thing? Relatively simple. Now to test their claim of smoothness being tied to system RAM, I simply ran around one of these towns in an easily repeatable manner several times on two different machines. First a few times with 32 gigs of RAM installed and a few more with just 16. So how did they test it? He basically used two machines, one with 16 gigabytes of system memory, or RAM, and one with 32 gigabytes of system memory. Then he booted up the game on ultra textures and then ran around the city a few times. And who would have thought it, with a problem where it slowly fills up memory after a while, which then leads to problems. In other words, dropping from 32 gigs to 16 gigs of system RAM made no discernible difference in performance while using ultra quality textures on either machine. In fact, it never even came close to using 32 gigs of RAM. But in this case, they kind of messed that up to test it properly. So now I saw that and then want to find out for myself what exactly really happens in the game. And I would like to show you that now. And for that, I recorded several small videos to find out what exactly actually happens in the game. But before that, first of all, to lay the groundwork, what's important is to first find out what exactly my system itself consumes without any games on it, without any programs open, while OBS is running. That's what we have here on the right. My system alone consumes 0.5 GB of VRAM, which is graphics memory, and has 0.1 GB of shared GPU memory, what is the memory that the graphics card puts onto the RAM, which is the system memory. That is often not very much, which is why you rarely see a particularly high number there. But it may be that the VRAM on the graphics card is full and then starts to use the shared memory from the normal RAM, in my case that are 16 GB maximum. Now importantly, what did I measure? It is only important to understand what these numbers are for. Up here first is my graphics card, its utilization, the megahertz and the power draw. This is the VRAM. It is important that this is the total consumption of VRAM from my whole system and from the game. And this is the actively used part of the VRAM. So what the game is actively using at that moment in that second. Smart people will notice something is off. Because I set my system alone with OBS running uses only 0.5 GB of VRAM. That means with those 5500 megabytes, that's 5.5 GB of VRAM, combined we should really only get 6000 megabytes in summary. That means the rest is memory that the game sort of just reserves, in case it needs it at some point. So. It's important to know, that means there is VRAM that the game is not actively using. That is just occupied so that no other program can use it in any way. So it can be accessed quickly. Next we just have the CPU, 
the degree count, the utilization, also not important for us here. And then we have our normal RAM, which is the system memory again. Again here, that is what is in summary consumed by the whole system, and that's what's used just by the game, by the tracked program. And we will kinda end up finding out that my system alone uses about 9 gigabytes of RAM, 9000 megabytes. Remember that, I will get to it later. These are just the FPS and the frame times. Frame times are important because that shows in which intervals your PC can generate new frames. So if they look like this, these are stutters, these are freezes, that's what you don't want to see here. Dedicated VRAM is basically the number up here, again, but from another source. It's just for safety purposes, so I know that the measurements are correct. And then we have the shared memory down here. That is what I said before, the space that the graphics card can use from your system RAM too. The number down here simply shows how much system RAM your graphics card uses at that moment. And now we get to the videos that I did on ultra settings because that was just the fastest way to show you what exactly happens to you and me in the game. So we start in the game, we log in, we take our character, go into the game, and what we see here is what the game uses up at that exact moment. And you can see that the game straight up fills up my whole 8 gigabytes of VRAM. What you will also see up here for the VRAM the game is actively using at that moment is that this number will never go over 6000 megabyte. Now let's just start to skip a little bit through the video and uh, consciously track the RAM numbers because you will see it will just go up and up and up over time. So what exactly happens? The VRAM used by the whole system kept out completely from the start. Then the game starts to put files that it can't put into the VRAM anymore into the RAM and we see that this number slowly but steadily starts to increase. And at some point, that's the point in the video, where you see that it just doesn't work at all anymore and that's kind of the moment now where OBS stopped recording for me. That's why I can show you more footage there. What's important to know is the highest I've ever seen here are 15,500 megabytes, so 15.5 gigabytes. That might be interesting for another point later. And in any case, that's the problem. That the game is obviously not capable to free up the RAM to reuse it so the game could run halfway smoothly. But it also is not using the reserved VRAM particularly well. Because, as I said, we see over the whole length of this video, the actively used VRAM number never goes over 6000 megabytes, And that rarely happens at all, by the way. I've tested that a lot and it almost never went over 6000 megabytes. I've seen it once at 6100, but as I said, rarely. That's in the end what happens. It throws stuff from the VRAM onto the RAM that fills up until the game starts stuttering, freezing and crashing. And just to show you that it happens on any settings, here again on low settings, here I was playing the game until I saw the VRAM filled up and then I kind of hit record. For one, also on low settings the game uses over 5 GB of VRAM. I have no idea for what, because on low settings the game just looks like shit, but it is how it is. That's what the game is actively using. And now if we look again at the little number here, in the course of the video we will see the number is slowly but steadily increasing. On low settings that is of course much slower, so who wants to dodge the stuttering and the freezes as good as possible should very much play at low or mid settings. But we can clearly see that the same also happens on low settings, so it's not just a problem for ultra or high settings. That basically the game says to the GPU, hey please throw stuff on the RAM, because my VRAM is full all the time. At least on my system. So the last thing that we have to find out is how much of the system RAM usage comes from the GPU, and how much is what the game would use anyway. And therefore I played a little bit on Ultra until both RAMs were filled up a little bit. Then I changed the textures to clear up the memory and you can see the graphical difference here. 
And as you can see, the numbers went down a lot. So the most important thing for us is that number here, 9,500 megabyte system memory or RAM. Because that's the closest I personally could get to an accurate number what the RAM usage is for just CPU tasks. Because the VRAM is not filled up yet, so there's no reason to throw visual files onto the RAM. And of course, visually, it's an enormous difference, despite that the game still uses 4000 megabyte of VRAM for whatever, I don't know. And that's where we come from the practical part to the theoretical part. Don't freak out, it's a lot of text, I know it, but I will explain. So how does all of that work and what seems Diablo 4 to do to create these issues? First of all, of course, if you're loading into the game, you get a loading screen and the game loads visual files from your hard drive to your graphics card and the VRAM. So these are files important for the graphical aspect of a game, like, as I said, textures or shaders or meshes, for example. And if you remember correctly, my system just used about 0.5 gigabytes of VRAM. Then Diablo 4 basically never used more than about 6 GB of VRAM actively. What means that overall the rest must have been 1.5 GB of reserved VRAM. And when the whole VRAM is full, the game or your GPU starts to throw shit onto your RAM. Which is usually just used for CPU tasks. So let's slowly but steadily bring things together. Important to know is my system just uses about 9 GB of system RAM. Then we have the 9.5 GB of system RAM from Diablo 4, from the last clip we looked at, and which is relatively normal for a game the size of Diablo 4, I think. And that means the rest that is used here, if we, for example, look at this number here, when my RAM kind of caps out in the game, has to be RAM that is also used by the GPU and that slowly fills up like the normal VRAM 2. But, and that's also important, never really uses more than 1.5 GB actively. That this little number here that I've explained previously to you, it shows the amount of RAM the GPU uses actively at that moment. And I've never seen that number crawl over 1.5 GB. Never. And that means that this part and this part have to be pretty much just some form of reserved space, meaning files that are not actively used by the game or the GPU. And what then happens pretty constantly when the game hits around 16 GB of used RAM in summary, then the game starts to crash, at least in my case on my system. So 16 GB seems to be some form of a magical limit, I don't know, because as we can see, theoretically there is still a lot of RAM that could be used by the game as well. So why might that be the case? Well, for one, of course, it might just be the system that gets slowed down because using RAM as VRAM is not as efficient, right? On the other hand, though, Diablo 4 on PC is a console port means a game that was primarily developed for consoles and then just ported over to PC. And if we now take a look at the stats of the consoles, we can see they only have 16 GB of RAM. Both, by the way, here the PlayStation, here the Xbox. But important here is that the 16 GB from the consoles are all shared memory, so they can freely switch between CPU and GPU tasks. Because, as we can see, there is no dedicated VRAM on the GPU, so both parts have to share these 16 gigabytes. So the question that I had to ask with my 16 gigabyte of magical limit was if that is some form of coding from the game, where the game then stops to use more space and then struggles to keep up with the performance. And to be honest, that's a question that I can't really answer here, you know? Because I basically just want to show that this problem exists for months and that basically nobody talks about it. And that even channels like Digital Foundry, that are known for deep dives into the tech, seemingly did not dive deep enough this time. And that they didn't took the problem serious enough, despite that the game literally brings attention to it. That RAM is an important component for the game. 
And that's basically just a video where I hope that I can just throw it into the world, trying to explain to you what happens in the game and, well, just bring some attention to it, you know? And the only thing that you can do against the problems is basically either to flush your VRAM from time to time, so bring the textures to another setting and then maybe back to the preferred one so it cleans up the space a little bit. Or you can disable here, for example, in BattleNet, the hardware acceleration. Same goes for your browsers. Because when hardware acceleration is activated, it uses VRAM. And that's obviously something you want to reserve as much as possible for Diablo 4. And I hope it helped a little bit to understand what's happening. And this video goes out to all big creators to shed some light on it, to make some pressure. And of course, also to Digital Foundry, where I hope they might do some retesting again. And if we look at the roadmap for the gem changes in the game, we might actually get a technical fix in about, I don't know, half a year. So that was my little analysis. Everyone who is more tech savvy, just please correct me if something is wrong in uh, the comments. And besides that, I can just wish you all a wonderful rest of your day. And we see us in one of my next videos. See ya.